analyze conditional statements. You can see here in our comic that we have a picture of a chef, and he's throwing a uh, pizza crust in the air, and it looks like the infinity symbol. And so the kids are saying, man, this pizza's taking forever. So it's taking an infinite amount of time in their eyes. So today we are going to analyze conditional statements, and so we'll talk about real quick what is a conditional statement and what does it mean to put it in if-then form. So a conditional statement is a statement with a hypothesis and a conclusion. Okay, so the hypothesis will result in the conclusion happening. Okay, and if then form, the if part of the statement is the hypothesis, and the then the conclusion. Okay, so if something happens, then something else will happen. And that's where you have your hypothesis and your conclusion of your statement. All right, example one, we want to write this statement in if-then form. And so what we want to do is we want to, we want to uh, take the hypothesis out of this and the conclusion out of this statement. So it says, I won't come over if we're watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians. So the if part, the hypothesis part, is actually if we're going to watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians then I won't come over, okay? So this one is a little bit backwards, but if you think about it, the the hypothesis, the um, conditional part is if we're watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians. So if we're watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians, then I won't come over. All right, so identify, in example two, identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of the statement, and then negate the statement. So first of all, let's identify where's the hypothesis and conclusion. So if this month is July, is the hypothesis. Then the next month is August. This would be the conclusion. Okay. Then it says to negate the statement, and negate is going to mean to take the opposite of the statement. Okay. So if it is not July, Then, the next month is not August. And that's how we negate a statement. We take the opposite of the original. 
All right, so we want to rewrite the statement below in if-then form and decide if each statement's true or false. So Olympians are athletes. So if someone is an Olympian, then... They are an athlete. Okay, so the converse means that we switch around the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay, and it also says to write if the statement's true or false after each one. That should be false. So, if someone is an athlete, then they are an Olympian. And I know lots and lots of athletes in our school and in my own experiences in life, and none of the ones that I know have ever made it to the Olympics. So this is a false statement. The inverse is going to be the same idea as negating. Okay, you're going to take the opposite of both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the inverse would be if someone... is not an Olympian, and we go from the original statement too here, so this is coming from our original if-then statement each time, then they are not an athlete. And that is also false. Plenty of people who are not Olympians are athletes. Then the contrapositive is going to be doing both the converse and the inverse. So you flip-flop the hypothesis and the conclusion, and you put in the opposite. So from the original, we would say if someone is not an athlete... then they are not an Olympian. So if someone is not an athlete, then they are not an Olympian. And I'm going to go ahead and say that's true, because our Olympians are athletes, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's true. So, by conditional statement, we only write the by conditional statement when all four statements are true. Okay? So, in this case, we cannot write a by conditional statement. But all we're going to do when we have the by conditional statement is we're going to write the hypothesis. And then we say if and only if. And then we write the conclusion. Okay. So if this were true, we would have said, um, someone is an athlete if and only, or I'm sorry, someone is an Olympian if and only if they are an athlete. Okay. So we will see some examples of that in class. So here's our last idea for today, perpendicular lines. If two lines intersect to form a right angle,
then we say that those lines are perpendicular. Okay, it's a really important concept. Um, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then we say that those lines are perpendicular. So that's a really important word that I want you to get used to using. So using definitions here in example four, decide whether each statement in the diagram is true. Explain your answer using definitions you have learned. So is AC perpendicular, and this symbol actually means perpendicular, and so that's a much shorter way of writing a pretty long word here, to BD. So because I see that this right angle is here, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's true, because they form a right angle. And we're going to go ahead and skip the last one for now because we haven't actually learned the definition for linear pair and we're going to learn it in this unit. So um, just know what perpendicular lines are and how to identify them. And it's just any two lines that form a right angle. All right, and have a wonderful day, guys. Thanks for watching.